Greetings, welcome to Day of the Indie, and welcome to part three of the Introduction to Moho video tutorial series. If you haven't seen part one or two, I recommend starting there first. If you did, cool, you're ready for the third and final video. In this part, Fred gets finished, and in the process, you'll learn about layer masks, shape effects, and how to give your work a little more style. So with that in mind, go ahead and open the starter file, which you can grab from dayoftheindie.com. You'll notice that Fred is, for the most part, complete, but he does have a few areas that need a little love. For example, his left eye, his mouth, his left antenna, his left arm, and his cape. On the plus side, both of his legs are pretty much done. That said, let's start by adding some highlights and shadows, or more accurately, shading. In Moho, as with so many other apps, there are multiple ways to accomplish the same thing. What I mean by that is this. The way I do things in Moho, like lights and shadows, for instance, is just one way to do things. If you've watched other videos that show how to do things a little different, don't worry about it. Try everything and then decide what works best for you. All right, let's take a look at Fred's antenna. I already worked on the right one. So if I zoom in, you can see that I changed the color to green. I added a highlight color and I added a shadow. I also adjusted the line width here and there to give it a bit more style. Let's jump over to the left antenna and do the same thing. Start by selecting the L antenna layer, which is part of the head group. Now select the shape using the Select Shape tool. With the shape selected, go ahead and change the fill color. I'm going to use the eyedropper to pull the green color from the other antenna. With that done, it's time to add the highlight. For that, I'm going to draw an oval shape on top of the shape that's already there. For this new shape, it shouldn't have a stroke or be green, so let's change that. Click off the current shape and choose the Draw Shape tool. Make sure the Auto Fill is the only option selected. Then set the fill color to white. Also set the alpha to 25. When the color is white and the alpha is set to 25, it tends to give the illusion of a highlight. All right, with the option set, go ahead and draw the shape. If you need to adjust things, use the Transform Points tool to manipulate the shape until it looks good. Of course, if you need to add more points, use the Add Points tool. Cool, now let's get the shading in there. The way I always add shading, I shouldn't say always, the way I typically add shading is by using the Shaded Effects style. If you look at the Style panel, you'll see there's an Effect option with a drop-down menu. Some of these you'll see right away and some you won't see until you render the drawing. <laughs> Luckily for us, the shaded effect is one you can see right away. Go back to the Select Shape tool and select the original shape. Now head over to the Effect Style and select the shaded effect from the drop-down menu. At that point, you'll be presented with a pop-up menu where you can set all the different options. I'm going to set the offset to 8 and the blur to 0. I'm also going to turn on the Threshold option. The Threshold option works in conjunction with the Blur, and it can be used to produce smoother transitions in the corner. I'm also going to adjust the Light Angle, setting it to 135. And finally, I'm going to set the Shadow Color. I'll leave it black, but I'll adjust the Alpha to 25, which gives things a nice look. Perfect. Now that the shadow's in there, I think I want to adjust the highlight a bit. Okay, that's better. Now it's time to adjust the lines. For that, I'm going to switch to the Line Width tool, grab some points, and then move the mouse left and right to set the width. Nice. Okay, let's move on to the masking. Masking in Moho is what you can use to control the visible region of a layer. Take a look at Fred's right eye. Let me zoom out a bit. If I grab his pupil and drag it outside of the eyeball, notice how the area of the pupil that's on the outside is not visible. That's masking. Let me show you how it's done. But first, let me put his pupil back where it belongs. Otherwise, I kind of feel like he's staring at every keystroke I'm making, and that's just creepy. All right, that's better. Time to fix that other eye. Select the left eye layer group, which is L-I. Inside this group, there are three layers, pupil, eye, and dark dash circle. To set up a mask, double-click the layer group, the one named L-I. 
which will bring up the Layer Settings panel. From there, select the Masking tab and choose the Hide All option, then click OK. This is going to use the bottom layer as the mask, in this case, the dark dash circle layer. But we don't want that, and here's why. Although it might be difficult to see, notice how the pupil goes outside of the eyeball and travels into the dark circle. Also, the eyeball, that's the white part, is being clipped over here by the dark circle. So to fix things, we need to adjust the mask. Double click the dark dash circle layer to bring up its layer settings. Then select the Don't Mask This Layer option from the Masking tab and click OK. This will remove the layer from the mask. Now double click the Eye layer to bring up its settings and for its masking option, choose Add to Mask. Incidentally, the icons on the layer will indicate how the layer is reacting to the mask. OK, let's check out that eye now. It looks like the eyeball isn't clipped anymore and the pupil doesn't travel into the dark circle which is really cool. Except for the dark circle is a little too dark. Fred, being the evolved alien bug dude that he is, gets way more sleep than me, so let's lighten up that circle a bit. The easiest thing to do is adjust the layer's opacity setting. Double-click the layer and change the opacity to 25. All right, one last thing. The eye needs some shading. Go to the eye layer and select the shape, and set the effect style to shaded. When prompted for the option, set the light angle to 110, the offset to 10, and the blur to zero. Click on the threshold option, and then set the color to black with an alpha setting of 25. Fantastic. Now, before we move on to the mouth, let's take care of Fred's arms. Fred's right arm is missing the edge. This was done using the hide edge tool. So for the left arm, let's do the same. Using the Select Shape tool, select the upper layer from the L-arm layer. Then using the Hide Edge tool, click on the edge to hide it. Now use the Line Width tool to give it some character. I'm going to zoom in a bit and tweak his arm because it kind of looks weird. All right, on to Fred's cape, the thing that makes him super. Fred's cape is made up of two layers, one for the lines on the fabric and one for the fabric. I'd probably combine these two layers if I were animating Fred, but for the sake of this tutorial, I decided to split them out. Anyway, Fred needs one more line on his cape. Switch to the Add Point tool and jump over to the Lines layer in the cape group. Let me zoom out. Okay, to draw a line, click and drag. Now turn that line into a shape by switching to the Create Shape tool. Then select the line, make sure Stroke is selected, and then click the Create Shape button. Once the shape is created, go ahead and mess around with the line width until you're happy. If you need to zoom in, that's fine. All right, so all that's left to do is Fred's mouth. Go to the Mouth group and set the masking option to Hide All. Of course, when you do that, the outlines for the mouth get kind of wonky. In order to fix that, select the Mouth Vector Layer, that's the one at the bottom here, and bring up its layer settings. For the masking settings, switch on the option to Exclude Strokes. And there you go, the outlines for the mouth are back. At this point, you can mess around with the teeth and not worry about them busting through Fred's mouth, which will come in handy when you start to animate things. So that's it, there you have it. Fred is pretty much done, which means the Introduction to Moho video tutorial series is also done. But don't worry, we'll be working on more Moho tutorials over at dayoftheindy.com, so be sure to stop by. And that's it for me, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm just going to mess around with Fred a bit more, kind of fix things a little bit. I'll save this file, it'll be included with the resources. In the meantime, feel free to play around with what you've done. And remember, if you're not having fun, you're probably not doing it right. See you next time. If you enjoyed watching this video, leave a comment, let us know on Twitter, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.